I'm Dean Safola. This is the Azure Academy. So continuing in our series on things that are new in Azure, want to talk today about the Azure Firewall. Now, there are many other vendors who uh, have been making firewall products for Azure. They're called Network Virtual Appliances, and they've been around for quite a while in the cloud. So going to our Azure portal, if we hit the plus, we go into the marketplace and we put in uh, a vendor's name, let's say like uh, Palo Alto. And we can see here we've got some of their next generation firewalls. Uh, another vendor that we could put in here would be Cisco. And we've got some firewalls here and some other network products. Uh, Checkpoint is another one who's got firewall. And there are many other firewall vendors. So why would we create a Azure firewall? Well, quite simply because we want to have our own firewall offering to show what the native capabilities are of a firewall and the Azure platform. So with that said, how can we deploy the Azure firewall and learn more about it? Well, we're going to look at that today and we're going to start with our documentation. So we go to our products and under networking, we have the Azure firewall. And under the overview, we get a good overview here of what it is that the firewall is and what it will do and to bring up this picture a little bigger basically the firewall would function in the hub of a hub and spoke topology so you got your on-prem connects to the hub and the hub is also the link back to the internet or to on-premise or perhaps to other sites uh, branch offices and things like that and the hub here focuses as the point of connectivity. So you've got shared services in the hub, domain controllers, file servers, jump servers, etc. And then in the spokes is where you build your applications or you have different departments who have their own little world, but that's connected to your on-prem through the hub. And with this firewall in place, we centrally manage access and permissions to the internet, to on-prem, and to each of the spokes, and what services we allow or deny. Okay, so that's a rough overview, and of course there's plenty more information here about current uh, features as well as some known issues. Uh, the firewall is a uh, recently GA'd product, so we have some current issues and limitations that we're currently working through as we develop this further. So to deploy the firewall, we can do that in two ways. We could either go into the marketplace and type firewall. And the first object that comes up is the Azure firewall and we could create that. Okay, and this would be the create experience. However, I want to deploy this in a different way to speed us along. So I'm going to go and type deploy up top and I want to deploy a custom template. And so this brings us to the custom template section where we have our direct link to our GitHub repository. And I want to type in here firewall and I could deploy just a straight up firewall or what we're going to do instead is deploy a firewall in a sandbox environment. So we're going to select that and hit select template. And we're going to construct a new resource group for this. We'll call it the sandbox. And we'll put this in north central US. We'll call this uh, the AA sandbox. Whoops. And we'll give it our username and password. And we can leave the location here as wherever our resource group is located. We'll check the box and we'll hit purchase. All right, so the deployment has kicked off. It's been running for about a minute or so. And already you can see what we're building out here. So we've got our virtual network, two servers, a storage account that's going to hold some of our diagnostic data, a route table public IP addresses, network security group, a NIC for each of our systems, a hard drive for each of our systems, and the firewall itself. So let's first start with the virtual network. So a virtual network here is laid out with three different subnets, and one is dedicated for the Azure firewall, and then we have another one that has our target server and then our jump box. And then inside firewalls in the virtual network, we've got our firewall registered here. Under our connected devices, 
uh, we can see each one of the systems and that they're all at 10.0 and then on their respective subnets. Under the servers subnet, that's where that route table is attached. So let's look at that route table. All right, so BGP is enabled on that route table and it says that anything that routes to this subnet, which is what this zero route does, redirect it to the firewall. Okay, so nothing can talk to this subnet or from this subnet without hitting the firewall, okay? And that's gonna become real important to how things are gonna operate. So let's look at the firewall. Now, I've added some extra stuff in here um, just to speed things along, but what we've essentially got here is a private IP. Uh, this is the IP on my virtual network. And then we also have a public IP address, and this is for the public facing side. And so we'll capture this IP, and we'll need that when we make our firewall rules. So before we get to the rules, one other thing I wanna show you is the diagnostic logs. So this is where you can set up the system to store its diagnostic data in a storage account as well as store it in a log analytics workspace, okay? Now the data retention points here are only related to the storage account, but uh, all of this goes to a log analytics workspace, which I have also set up, and there it is. Okay, so let's go back to the firewall and look at the rules. Now this is the meat of what we've got here. So I've created uh, several rules and I wanna start with the, the NAT rules because there is a, a specific uh, order here. So the, um, the rules actually will get processed in a specific pattern. So, and that is in our documentation. And in the Azure Firewall section, there is the firewall rule processing logic, okay? And that tells us how the rules get processed, in what order they get processed. And so we have our priority numbers here. And the priorities are just like with NSGs. So the lower the number, the higher the priority. So number one is the highest priority rule, and 4,000 would be like the lowest rule, okay? So this rule of 1,000 ranks higher than this rule. So this rule is going to be processed first. If nothing matches in this rule set, then we go to the next rule. If nothing matches, the traffic is dropped. Now I've created here two different kinds of rules and these rules are the internal rules. So if I wanted to RDP or SSH to my target server from inside my virtual network, the traffic would be redirected to the firewalls internal IP and then sent to the target. Additionally, I have external firewall rules and they go to the firewall's public IP, and they're on different ports, okay? Now I'm doing this because I want to obfuscate the fact that RDP is open on this box externally. So I have it set to a different port, not 3389, but 33890 and 220 for SSH. And that way, when traffic comes to this public IP on this port, it gets redirected internally. So let's take a look at that experience first. So this is the public IP of my jump server, and this is not the server that uh, is, is enabled through the firewall. And we can see that this is our jump host, and I want to go to the actual server managed by the firewall. And there we go, we're in. Now, while we're in this environment through RDP, we could do everything like normal as, a, as any jump host would provide us. But I want you to see that this is also available externally because of that other rule that we had. So and that rule is this rule going to 33890 on the port. And when I log into this session, we're back into that same server. Now I wanna show you also that here my remote desktop session dropped on that server from my jump host because I logged on to that same server. Okay, and I don't have terminal services set up, so that's why I got dropped there. All right, and now I have implemented the firewall in the Azure Academy resource group, and we've done away with the sandbox, and now we can see what this looks like in actual usage. So there's my firewall, and I've got my route table, and now I've got a hub and a spoke virtual network. So going into my hub virtual network and looking at the peerings, we can see that we've got our spoke set up. And that spoke is here. And that's on a separate address space using our hubs DNS servers. So that way we can still talk to our active directory. There's our peering 
and there is no firewall set up in the spoke. The firewall only exists in the hub. There's no service endpoints here. They're all in the hub. And the service endpoints exist only on the firewall subnet. And the firewall subnet then pushes those out to the subsequent subnets. The route table configured to work on the spoke subnets configured with a zero route that says send all traffic that's going to the spoke through the firewall and the firewall is configured with BGP and the firewall rules are just like what we looked at earlier so these are the NAT rules which are the inbound traffic rules and I've divided them into the internal and external rules so there we go that way we can RDP to our box that's in the spoke or SSH and then I've got the internal traffic communication so I can talk from the hub to the spoke as a jump server type situation and then our network rules are set up here to allow all of our active directory traffic and that way we can talk to our domain join the domain etc and then we have another rule set up here for file services and then in our application rules We've broken these up into two separate ones so that we can keep our FQDN tags for Azure services separate from our websites. Okay, so let's go to our VM and this is coming in through the external connection. So that's passing through the internet to the IP of the firewall, the public facing IP of the firewall, redirected to our box that is in the spoke and that's the name of our box and whoops there we go and we can see that we are indeed in the spoke now this box set up through the firewall we cannot get out to Google because there is no rule to match so we are denied can't get out We can get out to Microsoft. Okay, so we can get to Bing. The web filtering works. And then we can talk to Windows Update. So we've got uh, Windows Update working. We've got our web filtering working. We've got our network rules for talking to Active Directory. Let's see how that is. Okay, so we're getting the box to, uh, we've reached our domain controller and it's asking for authentication. We're gonna not do that at this point because this is just a test box. I don't actually want it joined to my domain. I won't be using it going forward. But this was just to show off what the new features are of the Azure Firewall. And so you can have three different kinds of rules, your inbound traffic rules, your outbound traffic rules, and then your rules within the network uh, itself or within a hub and spoke architecture. And uh, so this has just been a brief overview of the firewall. Hope you like that. Uh, give me uh, uh, some comments, some feedback, like, subscribe, and uh, let me know what else you guys would like to see. There's a, a few more new features that we'll be talking about, and we'll see you the next time.